Hello people, how are you? In this video, we want to look at the gross and microscopic features of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, correct? So are you ready? First, let us look at what we have seen so far. A recap. So we saw what Hashimoto's thyroiditis is. It is inflammation of thyroid caused due to autoimmune reasons. The other names are chronic lymphocytic thyroiditis, diffuse lymphocytic thyroiditis, goitris autoimmune thyroiditis, struma lymphomatosa. So thyroiditis is the inflammation of thyroid. It can be acute because of infection or chronic due to Hashimoto's thyroiditis or autoimmune thyroiditis. So we saw why the name Hashimoto came because of the Japanese surgeon Hashimoto who described the patients with goiter and intense lymphocytic infiltration of the thyroid. This is what you should remember always. Hashimoto means lymphocytic infiltration will be there. So the thyroid tissue will start looking like lymph uh, node. Okay. Then this will be usually characterized with hypothyroidism. Okay. There will be destruction of thyroid tissue. So there are three principal features, enlargement of the thyroid will be there, lymphocytic infiltration will be there and thyroid and autoantibodies can be detected. Clinical features, the person will come to you with a painless firm goitrous enlargement of the thyroid, the person will be showing symptoms of hypothyroidism maximum times. Women are affected and women uh, who have delivered children about three to six months ago also come up with this kind of issue. Five, uh, the, the thyroid hormone levels, the T3 and the T4 levels will be less. The radioactive iodine uptake also will be less. Uh, this can f uh, later on develop into malignant lymphoma. And uh, that's all, right? These are the clinical features. It is quite common, guys, this um, even where iodine supplies are adequate or iodine supplies are more Hashimoto's thyroiditis is there. Etiology, why it happens? It happens because of uh, autoimmune uh, problem. Even if iodine is adequate or more, there is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. We looked at the genes CTLA4, PTPN. See here also CT, here PT. So, CTLA4, PTPN22 genes will have polymorphism. What are these? Uh, this is cytotoxic lymphocyte, cytotoxic lymphocyte associated antigen. And this is protein tyrosine phosphatase 22 gene. So then you have uh, other associated uh, autoimmune diseases could be caused like um, type 1 diabetes mellitus, rheumatoid arthritis, SLE. These patients can be having Hashimoto's as well. <clears throat> then coming to monozygotic twins, genetic causes are there and uh, in first degree relatives you can see Hashimoto's and these people will be having a HLA, DR3 and DR5 subtypes. It's very difficult to remember the subtypes because many diseases they will give this HLA, human leukocyte antigen. If you can remember, good. Now pathogenesis, because of all these etiology, you have to mention the etiology. Okay, what is this? Okay, so you have to mention the etiology, then you have to mention the pathogenesis because of all those etiologies. There will be pathogenesis where <clears throat> you can see that the thyroid epithelium gets uh, injury, it gets destroyed. Let's see how. Because first of all, there is self tolerance is not there, and also thyroid autoimmunity, induction of the thyroid autoimmunity. So, first of all, the CD4. T helper 1 cell gets activated, it will release interferon gamma which will bring the macrophages and activate the macrophages. The macrophages will go and destroy the thyrocytes. Then comes the CD8 plus cytotoxic T cells. These are going to do cell mediated cytotoxicity. Here they have written some FAS, L and all, not sure what that is. Moving on. The plasma cell is there and the plasma cell is nothing but the B cell, right? This releases a lot of antibodies which are autoantibodies. So this will attack the thyroid uh, tissue. So what you should understand, this is the third principle, right? The third principle said what? Presence of thyroid autoantibodies. So that will be there here. So the natural killer cell will come here 
and uh, there is cell mediated cell mediated actually it is antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity okay so that was the pathogenesis so what are the antibodies that you can detect in the sera you can detect uh, antibodies autoantibodies against against the thyroid microsoma microsomal an antibodies will be the thyroglobulin antibodies TSH receptor antibodies, receptors against the follicle cells, receptor against the main autoantibodies against the hormones itself. Okay. Then coming to inhibitory uh, TSH receptor antibodies. So will lead to hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism will be because of inhibitory antibodies. Then moving on guys. Gross, gross features. Now we have uh, come to actual discussion of this video. We want to discuss the gross and the microscopy. So what happens to the thyroid gland? Very easily gross you can write. There is enlargement, diffuse, symmetric, firm, rubbery enlargement of the thyroid. It may weigh about 100 to 300 grams. What is the normal weight of thyroid? Normal is just 25 grams. So it is about 4 to how many times? 25 watts is 300. 4, 4, 4, 12 are. Okay, 4 to 12 times it has increased, is it? Interesting. Then section surface. Now you will take thyroid and you will do a cross section what you will see. Here you will see that the thyroid gland is fleshy. Then there will be this lobulations will be more assenuated lo lobulations because of all the fibrosis and all, right? All the fibrous septa will be more thick. And in the variant, uh, fibrosing variant, you will see that there is compression of surrounding tissue. So can you summarize the gross now? First of all, uh, when you look from outside, there is symmetric, firm, diffuse, rubbery enlargement of the thyroid, coitrous uh, thyroid. Then you have cut section. When you cut, you will see that um, it is going to be uh, the fibrous septa, all the septa are going to be assinuated, right? <clears throat> it is fleshy, that word we forgot, fleshy. And then in the variant where there is fibrosis, you can see that there is compression of surrounding tissue. Very good. Now let us move on to the microscopy of uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Remember this word Struma lymphomatosa. Okay, Struma lymphomatosa. If you write that word, you may get some nice marks. So try to write it. Okay. So Struma lymphomatosa. Okay. Okay. Then what will happen, there is a lymphocytic infiltration of the gland. The gland is full of lymphocytes, macrophages, plasma cells, etc. So don't forget to write plasma cells. You have seen in pathogenesis, right? Plasma cells also will be there. Not able to adjust the space for both, is it? Okay. Then what will happen, there will be lymphoid follicles and germinal centers also. Lymphoid follicles having germinal centers. You have to draw like this. Okay, there will be decreased number of thyroid follicles. You can see that the thyroid follicles are less in number. They are atrophic. They don't have any colloid inside. Fine. Then there are Hertel cells. What are these Hertel cells? The follicular epithelial cells are transformed into their degenerated state termed Hertel cells. So what are Hertel cells? Basically, Hertel cells are the degenerated follicular epithelial cells. Okay, degenerated. So this word you should make it as red degenerated okay <clears throat> these cells will be actually eosinophilic so you will have to draw them as pink pink and they'll have very large bizarre nuclei they'll have large number of mitochondria etc they'll have granular cytoplasm also these hertel cells see this is hertel cell individual one one cell is hertel cell the entire thing is the atropid follicle is it clear hold on Okay, so the entire thing is the atropic follicle. The individual cells are the Hertel cells. Okay, the Hertel cells you have to explain what are the characteristics of Hertel cells. The entire paragraph is important guys. Hertel cells, they are the follicular epithelial cells which are degenerated. The characteristics will be they will be eosinophilic or oxyphilic. They have granular cytoplasm. This word is important also. They have large number of mitochondria. Let's make it this kind of pink. They are eosinophilic, oxyphilic. 
large number of mitochondria and bizarre nuclei okay large bizarre nuclei will be there so guys you have to draw a follicle atropic follicle in those there'll be herthel cells and in that there'll be large atropic nu uh, large bizarre nuclei large mitochondria large number of mitochondria granular cytoplasm okay granular cytoplasm <clears throat> which would be eosinophilic or oxyphilic abundant cytoplasm this much you have to explain okay now let us see about the septa okay about the septa let us see so there is a slight fibrous thickening of the septa look at this the septa will be fibrous uh, it will be thick separating the thyroid lobules then there is a variant fibrosing variant we always telling this fibrosing variant always even in gross we said fibrosing variant it will put pressure on the surrounding uh, structures so here there will be uh, considerable fibrous replacement with okay there will be fibrous will be more okay and less prominent lymphoid infiltrate okay now let us do one thing now that you have understood the gross and the microscopy do you want to look at this diagram you should draw this in the exam okay draw lymphoid follicles with germinal centers draw atropic follicles with herthel cells lymphoid infiltration macrophages plasma cell infiltration fibrous septa that's all this is the microscopy of hashimotos <clears throat> so we have covered the gross and the microscopy what we wanted to cover in this video guys so i think uh, we can wind up this video what do you say okay um hold on i think uh let's conclude this video with just a word on the treatment because they have not mentioned it hashimotos thyroiditis treatment as far as i can check here it says thyroid hormone replacement okay so we are winding up this video see you uh oh and say bye